So when you guys think about friendship, what is the thing that comes to mind for you for defining what friendship is? Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, for me, it's like, you know, just like a night, you know, when you, you don't have to talk every day, but when you get together, it's like the same, the same thing, same atmosphere, we're going to be ourselves, we're going to trip out, we're going to have fun. And I look at friendship as a place where you can be authentic. That's why, you know, just be who you really are. Yeah, that's that's good. Authentic is a great word to utilize because, I, again, like I said, I think as I was sharing with Kelly before we introduced you, so many times we we misuse or overuse the term friendship, and we apply it to everybody. We just met somebody. Oh, that's my friend. No, it's not. You know, and right. so being authentic, I think, is is, is great. Kelly, what, what do you think? For sure, man. I, I can only say like my friends know the true me. Like my friends, I don't have to have a guard up. I don't have to say. Um, politically correct things. If I feel like cussing, I'm gonna cuss in front of my friends. I may not cuss on um, <laughs> get your ass off the fence, but if, I, if, I'm, if I'm hot, if I'm upset, um, my friends gonna get my true response. I'm not gonna hold my tongue. So a friend is also a place where I could be vulnerable. And um, majority of my friends, like you two guys, have become more like my brother. So yeah, that's how I define. So let me let me make sure I understand this, Kelly. You 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 are vulnerable. Yeah, but you can't, but you can't cuss here. Is what you're saying? <laughs> no, I'm saying on the show. I'm talking about when we're just hanging out. That's different than being on your show. This is all over the internet. Oh, okay, okay. I, I get it. I, I thought it's, it's not part of my brand. <laughs> if you don't know, I do cuss. I'm a cussing Christian. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. It, it'll take a lot for me to just cuss on your show, is what I'm saying. But you guys, like, I can I can be that. If I'm feeling that in that moment, I can be vulnerable and, and just say how I feel. I might try to be PC if I'm on a show like this or something like that. But we're true friends behind closed doors. I can be vulnerable and I can vent and I can let things out. Well, you do know people know now that you cuss. Hey, I don't care. They just may not hear it. <laughs> oh, now they know, now they know Kurt Franklin cuss too. <laughs> <laughs> that is for certain, man. All right, all right. So, so again, now most people call you Oliver Reed, but we met. Man, we used that. Nineties. Oh. It was nineties. Oh, ninety six. Yep. Oh man, 96. that's crazy. I, I mean, that yeah. really just hit me that we met in nineteen ninety six when I moved to Charlotte, and I stumbled upon this small church that happened to be led by your mother. Yeah. Crazy man. Ninety six. Wow. Grace Tabernacle, Grace Tabernacle, <laughs> Ministries of Glory. Grace Tabernacle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yo, like the crazy part is that church taught me so much. It, it taught all of us. Like yes, you, yes. Kelly talked about us, be, uh, us as friends being a being more like family. But yes. man, that church, we it was it was so. It was so confined that we were all like family. It's like yeah. we all became a part of each other's lives. And like, man, I remember a lot of the stuff that we used to do. Now, most people don't probably don't know this, but uh, Ty was a preacher at the church, which is <laughs> he was like, were you like the youth, the youth pastor initially? Yeah, I was youth pastor. And I didn't cuss. I didn't cuss. In, I didn't cuss on Sunday. Lies. <laughs> Now, now, is it you didn't cuss then or you don't cuss now? <laughs> <laughs> I do a little bit of both. I do a little both now. But on which, which way they, they go. <laughs> oh, man, that's crazy. That's crazy. And it's, it's so funny, like, when you think about that upbringing. Like, how old were we, Ty? Man, it was, a, it was our early 20s. Early. Because you were still in college, right? Yep. I think I was just born to school. I think I was a freshman when we met. Right now, I'll be 45. Yep, Winston State. 
Yeah, man, that's so crazy. Wow, 1996, man. And I was telling Kelly this uh, when we initially talked about you guys coming on here was, you know, I remember the three of us used to get on a call weekly. Or was it daily? Yes. It was weekly. Weekly. It was at least once a week. The three of us used to get on a call. We never missed it. And we did this for a very long time. And then right. all of a sudden, nothing. <laughs> nothing happened. You can't, you can't stop showing up. I would be like, <laughs> you know, you got this night. And y'all kept saying, I can't make it. I can't make it. So I stopped beating y'all up. I was like, well, I got stuff to do too. Peace. <laughs> It was every Sunday. Oh my goodness! Now, now, when you when you, when you look at, we talked about earlier about not talking every day, and it's something like again, me and Ty go back to '96. Me and you, Kelly, met in what year? Man, the year you introduced me to Ty. So I would say about 2010. Me and you met in 2010. So, yes. so we all went from talking often to. Not talking, and even still, I think I told Kelly this a couple weeks ago. Even with him, I said I got to learn how to be a better friend because you know, in my mind, I I have this thing where if you don't call me, I might not call you. <laughs> right, <laughs> That's just right. the truth, you know. Especially after after a time period, and it's not because I'm mad. It's just that I feel like life kicks in when it comes to people, and people are living, and it's not. It, I don't think you guys love me any less just because we don't right. talk. But at the same time, being somebody's friend, you know, especially like in, in this last year, like I didn't know that Kelly had COVID. Like yeah. that, that really hurt me when I, when he told me and I was like, how did I go this long without talking to him to even know that, you know, cause mm-hmm. Kelly, he's not the kind of guy that's going to post it on social media in the hospital bed. With his- yeah. <laughs> he, he ain't doing that, you know? So yeah. you know, not knowing. And then, I, Ty, I haven't talked to you in years, dude. Like crazy. Yeah. So it's at the at the end of the day, it's like not knowing what people that you've known a vast majority of like because I've known you over half my life. And Kelly yeah. in, in the same regards. And so I really wanted to talk about friendship tonight because for one, it hits home to me because you yeah. guys are my friends. It's not like, oh, it's just a term we threw around. No, you just got, I've known these guys for quite some time. We've been through a lot of things together. We've grown mm-hmm. together. We cried together. You know, we've gone to funerals together. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. Like, like the, the things you think about. I think in, in a time like this, when you're looking at the world changing, we don't really think about friendship or, or genuine friendships in a way. We, we tend to gravitate to new friend, or new people that we consider our friends. And sometimes we tend to forget those who've been with us for a time period. And again, it's not to say that you have to communicate with them all the time, that you have, you guys have to hang out and do stuff. Like, I saw, I'm finna, here's a truth moment. I saw a picture with you two of y'all in, uh, was it Nashville? Um, the one I did. In a football game. I think it was yeah, the yeah. Bears or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, we went to the Bears game. Nick, I was mad as hell. <laughs> I was mad as hell. I was like, "How the hell they hanging out together?" And ain't nobody called me, man. We definitely got you. You, you, right there the last year my boys came to town. Next time we got you, though, I'm definitely going to some more next year. Yeah, and, 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 and I realized, like, here's here's the crazy part, right? You guys live close to each other. We do. Yeah, we both in both in VA. Now, now, how long you guys been living close to uh, that close to one another? The crazy thing, the whole time. Really? The first time, the first time we met, though, was in where we at? Charlotte. Charlotte, the my first, men's conference. Men's conference. Yeah. Yep. We met in person at the first time in Charlotte at a men's conference. But um, but yeah, we've been in VA the whole time. After that. We started going back and forth to each other's houses once we found out how close we were in VA. Yeah, and, and, and I was just telling my aunt this this today, man. I think that's one of the things. Even though I love living here in Los Angeles, like the weather's great. I think uh, the city is wonderful. The views are amazing. However, being so far away from people sometimes uh, has a takes a toll on me because when I lived in Atlanta, I saw Kelly often. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, I was there. 
Yeah, Kelly was all, he he, he should have had a place in Atlanta as, as much as he right. as, as was in Atlanta. You still go to Atlanta that much now? I just got back last week. I'm all of, I'm all of the day. I was <laughs> on Atlanta. That's my second home. Yeah, and I think Ty. When the last time we seen each other? Man, it's been it's been I would say two thousands. I'm talking about like early 2000s. I think the last time you can I saw you was at mom's church. And the reason why I say mom, because you consider the son. So we grew up together, ministry, yeah. everything. So the last time I think is when you came to, when we were in the hotel and you came by. I think uh-uh. you and your wife at the time. That's the last uh-uh. time? No. Nope. Where was it? Nope. It was, it was later than that. Um, we, remember, oh, remember, we ran into each other when I was hosting an event at, uh, at the Full Gospel thing in Atlanta at the. Georgia World Congress Center, and I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, yeah. "Did I run into you? You was um, you was there for what was, was it? Was a full, it was a full gospel conference in Atlanta. Oh. That was two thousand, maybe us yeah. eleven, twelve, maybe around it. I do it remember was, that now. Thank you. It was before I moved to California, and I've been here eight years this year. So, um, yeah, and. You saw me in a in the program, and I happened to run yeah. into you in the hallway, and I think you called your mom um, or something like that. Yeah. How's your mom doing? Yeah, man, she she's doing good. She's doing good. Mom is mom. You know that. Yeah, yeah. I gotta call your mom, man. I gotta call your mom because yeah. again, you know, when you think about family and friendships, um, it, it's all it's to me. It's about the gathering. It's about listening, hearing, and, and really just tapping into uh, the fibers of, of the people. Mm-hmm. Everyday lives, w- w- the kids, you know, like, I, I watch, it's crazy because it's almost like watching television. And I think, like, I, I watch Kelly and his kids grow up on social yeah. media. You know, it, it's yeah. crazy because last time Kelly was in Los Angeles was 2018. Yeah, so Something like that, yep, for New Year's Eve. Yeah, 2018, yep. And he called me, he's like, hey, man, I'm going to be in L.A., uh, let's get up. I went by, picked him up, we hung out, we ate, and we had a great time, man. And yeah. when I saw his son, because um, his son was performing, that's why he was here, I was just like, wow. I told Cal, I said, man, the last time I seen him do he was a little dude, right? Yeah. And now he's yeah. grown, and I think he's engaged now, right? Yep. Yeah. Crazy and, and Ty, your kids are what 30 40? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my baby girl's graduating this year, she's 18, so it's like 18 on up. My son is 19, my, my daughter's 21, so 22. So it's, we, it's, it's crazy. Golly, dude, like you, you guys ever think about how. You don't look at those years until they're past, and then you'd be like, "Man, it's been that long." Yeah, yeah. That, that that's crazy. What do you guys think? What are some of the things that people? Uh, what are, what are some of the mistakes y'all think people make when it comes to friendship? Oh um, man, mistakes when it comes to friendship. Um, just it, it not being an, an equal exchange, so an uh, equal sacrifice. Right, so equal effort, you know. But I can't say it's that's tough, man. That's a tough thing because, like you said, I use that term friendship lightly. No one that has gotten close to me as a friend has not reciprocated what I put in. So anybody outside of that, I wouldn't consider them a friend. So people that may consider me a friend that hasn't reciprocated my efforts, I don't consider them friends. So. That's what I mean. What you call them, associates or just people you know? Just like, yo, that's a homeboy or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, a, that's good buddy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> good buddy. That dude. That's that You know what you say? You say, what's up, fam? <laughs> How you doing? Uh, what a do, fam? How you doing? They be like, hey, bro. Bro, how you doing? I'm like, what's up, fam? <laughs> Um, yeah, that's it. what about you, Ty? I think the biggest misconception is, you know, I'm, I'm along with Kelly and same with you. Like I look at y'all as bros. 
I think y'all kind of transition from a friend to a bro. Like, this is my bro. Because um, really, in actuality, you know, you guys are closer to, than some of my actual blood family. Mm, right. And I think that that's a misconception. Like, literally, and I don't say that lightly, like, oh, but I look at that as like, you know, the biggest thing I would say for misconception is, or something that people kind of look at friendships and messes up friendships, is when you hold a grudge. Yeah, I think when you hold a mm-hmm. grudge, because some people were so tight, you know what I mean, and somebody may not even be thinking. It could be, like, I have a rub, I'm sure I have maybe rub it one of y'all the wrong way, man, I had thought about it. But if y'all hold on to y'all, I'm like, well, you know what, Todd knew you did that. And when you start doing that, you know, I learned that, man, ain't got time. You know, when you put with people in a brother, you know, your brother you fight with, you laugh with, yeah. you, with you might be upset with, but it's like, you know, boom. In a few minutes, we straight. Like, what are we going to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's what that's how I think uh, what suffers is when you hold that grudge. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and I have to say this, since you brought it up, I'm guilty of that with you. Yeah. I'm guilty of that with Ty. Because Ty came to L.A. one time. I didn't even know he was here. <laughs> and I ain't seen him in a long time, right? And I seen a post that he yeah. wrote with some other dude talking about this is dude in California. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 here's the thing. Now, this is where I went wrong, and this is where growth and maturity comes in. What I should have done was got on the phone with him and be like, hey, bro, man, that made me feel some kind of way. Didn't have to carry the grudge, but I chose not to. I was like, oh, this nigga on some new stuff. <laughs> like, hey, 96, bro. <laughs> 96, man. You know? And, and it's one of those things where. It's like, when you think about it, man, it didn't even matter. Because who, whoever that guy is has nothing to do with my relationship with him. You know what I'm saying? And you allow years to go past where you're not talking to somebody, whether it be purposely or unintentionally. And you miss out on the time. And you forget about, like, I got to only talk about me. You forget about all the stuff mm-hmm. you guys built that are that holds a, a great value. To your relationship, and one little moment, one little moment, you allow to eviscerate everything else you guys have built. And you know how many people yeah. are like that right now, guys? Y'all know how many friends are have fallen out because of something yeah. like that, man. Which is why I thought it was more important when I said, "Kelly, hey man, ask ask Ty, man, if he will do this show." <laughs> I didn't know he would do it. <laughs> I didn't know he would do it. You know, no, I would get him. You know, you know what you should have did. You should have called that joke and cussed him out, cause that's really what I would have did. And he could. <laughs> I would have really cussed him out. He come, he come anywhere near my crib and don't holler at me. I'm cussing him out. Point right. blank. You. you, you know what, Kelly? You're right. I should have, I should have just addressed it. But I'm gonna tell you how I felt at the time. I was just like, oh, okay. He didn't change. We, we, we ain't as tight as I thought we were because, I, I mean, he had to know I live here. I've been living here I don't know how long, right? But, again, I think we, you make you make assumptions because yeah. I don't know why he was here. I don't know what his mindset. I don't even know if he had time, you know. Um, right. Well, I ain't going to say had time because, I mean, obviously he had time. He was hanging out with some other nigga in there. Like. <laughs> 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 but, but I don't know what his life was like because we hadn't talked. You know what I'm saying? But I should have called him. I should have expressed how I felt. We would have did it right then, and we would have been okay. It wouldn't have been no problem, right? Yeah, and definitely forgive me on that. I'm definitely no, it was no excuse on that. But from a standpoint, I could see how that happens. Because one of the things that happened in life just perception. Because it was really crazy in the time that I was there, but it was no excuse for, for not hollering at your boy. But I would have felt the same kind of way on the other side. But right. literally, you know, it was from a standpoint, you know, it was like, that's why I'm saying what I'm saying, because there's times where we all hold grudges. And like, my right. biggest thing was, like, keep it all the way funky, 100. It was like, we had we had a time where, like, I'm like, I, we, we were on that call every Sunday. Like, every Sunday we were on that call. And I was like, we were just tripping. We were like, Family, like yo, I'm about to do my thing. You know, I'm about to do my 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 uh my uh man's conference. I'm like, I know I'm coming through. Go host this joint. You know what I mean? And I was like, that's the first time I met Kelly. Both was like, listen, I can't make it. 
But at that time, I was at a, I was at a, I was at a place of immaturity. So I was like, this dude, this dude, and it's gonna show if anybody gonna be in the conference, it's gonna be me, Kelly, and Bo. And we gonna be in it. So it was like, but what I did, same thing. I got pulled up like this dude. He was most. This dude, I've been doing this since '96, baby. We out here. So I'm like, but at the end of the day. You know, I got past that, but at the end of the day, it was a tickle tat thing. But it was kind of like I, I noticed it. I think it hit me up. I think it did hit me up on social media. Like you came in here, like, yeah, I did. It was a snap on. I didn't even think about it. I was like, yo, that was wrong. So definitely give me, bro. Yeah, man. It, it, it's it's <laughs> <Look at you. laughs> <laughs> He's the youngest one on the broadcast. Oh, oh, Kelly, you got old right now? Huh? How old are you, Kelly? 42. Okay, yeah, yeah. And Ty, you how old? I'll be 45 September. Oh, I'm the oldest? You the yeah, oldest, yeah. You, I you didn't know that, old. man. You big boy. You big young, though. You the little girls. You big boy. I got to do better. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. But you know, it's crazy that you say that because I always thought Ty was older than me because he's always had this mature spirit about himself. You know, like you think about someone at our age in our twenties who's a youth pastor at a church. Like I used to this is stuff I don't know if I've ever said this before, but I'm about to say it now. So I used to I, I used to want to emulate him because of how great of an orator he was like he would stand up in front of crowds he would command the crowd man he would have all his points together he, he could slide through turns i'll be like man, <laughs> man you know and that's when i used to sit out in the in the pews and watch him speak man you know one of the greatest times of my life man ty i know you part you remember this you remember when your mom had me you chuck and i can't think yeah. of the other guy's name we, we was like the four gospels or something like that. We all had to yeah, yeah. that day. Man, that was one of the most exciting times of my Mark, life. Mark. Mark. It was Mark. Yeah, yeah Mark. Yeah. And uh, I was just like, wow, man. You know, I get a chance to stand on the same stage with this guy that I revered all these years looking up to him in the speaker's uh, uh, space. And, man, it was like, it was great. And so, yeah, he, I've always thought of him as older than me because he's always had that, that, that mature spirit about himself. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't know I was the oldest guy. Okay. All right. You're the oldest, bro. You big bro. We little bros, right? <laughs> yeah, we little bros. Kelly's the Hey, Ty, Kelly's the guy that used to get all the whippings for what we did. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, guy, so, so, what would you say to uh, people who might be, I would say, quarreling with people that they have? Consider their friends. You know, I I wouldn't say we quarreled, Ty. Well, yeah, we did. I guess we did. Uh, but what would y'all you guys say to people who might be sitting at home, they're watching this, or they're going to watch this at a certain time or listen to it? What advice would you give somebody who may have fallen out with a friend over something that, that might be minute or something they consider to be huge? What would you say to them as far as mending that? Would you can would you suggest they mend it or you know let it be? It depends on for me. It depends on. Um, the type of friend that they were and if they were a true friend and the type of energy that they carry now because there's people who who are out of my life who you know are family but I don't like the type of energy that they carry now so if this is a person that you feel like can still add value to your life mm -hmm. um, of course if they've done something you definitely forgive them but move on but if you feel like it's something that, you know, needs to be reconciled and that you would love to have this person back in your life, mm -hmm. go ahead and call them up and fix it. Just have a conversation. And just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean that they deserve access to your life. Because there's people that I forget, but they'll never have access to my life again. But one of you brothers, we fall out. We fall back in. I remember Ty said something one time. He was like, yo, we may fall out. I'm like, bro, we ain't never falling out. And if we do, I'm cussing you out and we back <laughs> Period. You know what I mean? And that's how I roll like with a true brother. Because at the end of the day, I know y'all love me. It ain't about nothing else. Mm -hmm. If I if I need something, I can call y'all. And y'all don't have nothing but love for me and show me that. So those type of people I want to keep in my life. Everybody else with bad negative energy, they can keep stepping. 
All right. What about yeah. you, Ty? I think doing 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 what you what you're doing right now, being open. A lot of conversations. I always say this, man. What's said? I mean, silence is what could have been said without effort. Which means when you a lot of times it's easier to be just silent, frustrated, estranged, whatever you want to call it. When when you start talking, there's no way we get in the same room and it don't go back to brotherhood no matter what. And it wasn't that with love law, it was just like what we implode. So I would say, Hey, come on, come on off the wall. Or come on here. Say, Hey, listen. Come on, else go get out. Whatever. <laughs> be like, hey, this is what we got to do because at the end of the day, as men, a lot of times we process as men. That's a whole other thing that we ain't even really dealing with. Our brother, how we deal with. We might still be cool, but I ain't calling you. But if somebody gets attack you, I'm gonna be right there. Or if you need something, I'm gonna be right there. But you know, our brothers do. I'm gonna, we gonna go to our room and just be like, whatever. I'm getting my car. You get your car. Drive off. But we still there. With women, they more a lot of times they tend by nature to just talk more. So I know, like, with me, I have to do a better job of communicating. So I think it's really looking to see I agree with Kelly. Like, somebody that, it's people that fell out of my life for a good reason, who I thought were brothers, you all know, were sisters, but I really realized, nah, or oh, they may have been good for that season. And being okay for that season, and being okay with them leaving, mm-hmm. and then some people will come back. But, like, when you really got somebody like you guys that's really been a core, like, I look back, I tell Kelly stories about us, in that small church where we did, we slept on the couch. We, 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 were, we were just all family. You know what I mean? So when it came down to that, me and Kelly done been through the rough of the road. Even these years, like, we done been, like, 40-year trials, you know, together. We were like, yo, I call him, cry. You know, I'm crying for, like, two or three hours. I'm sitting in the pocket lot crying. You know, call me, like, I'm about to kill everybody, you know. <laughs> Thank you, <God. laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, we just talk, so that's that's a good thing. But you know what the crazy thing is? The person that introduces me to Mo falls on that side where he could never call me. He better not ever pick up his phone and call me. Wait, who introduced you to me? You know, dude in the wheelchair. It's that nigga was on fire. What's happening in his life? He did not call me. But what came out of that, I was able to meet two brothers who have been part of my life forever. Oh, man, that's crazy, dude. That is crazy, man. I'm looking at a lot of the comments that people are making right now. Uh, hey. Somebody said, Kelly and this grand cuss out. <laughs> this, is, this is just the elementary version of it. <laughs> oh, man. That's that, that's so ironic. Yeah, you, you're right about that, man, because we, we had a friendship that developed out of a, I wouldn't even say a chance meeting. <laughs> This is one of the funniest stories ever. Meeting with meeting Kelly for the first time. And I was looking at this guy like, hey man, this guy got a lot of wisdom because I met him at did I meet you at a conference or something? Yeah, I was speaking at a conference that the dude put on. Yeah, and then the guy wanted to have lunch with me and, and Joe and, and Kelly. And um, and I never do this, but you know, we was, it was time for the bill time, and the guy's like, oh, no, no, I got it, I got it. <laughs> and me and Joe look at each other like, you sure, dude? He's like, yes, don't worry about it, I got it. Not knowing he didn't have a dime. <laughs> he didn't have a dime. Not a dime. He was expecting Kelly to pay for the meal, and I'm like, dude, what kind of what kind of nigga is that <laughs> that look at somebody he consider his friend? Not a dime. Offers to pay for a whole, and we ate at what is was it Gladys Night Chicken and Waffles? Really? Gladys Night Chicken and Waffles, and everybody got extra everything that day. <laughs> and then he was like, he was like, to take home. He was like, no, I got it. I got it. Never <laughs> money, bro. And time, I ended up paying to my, yeah, I got, I got you. I got you back. That cat didn't never pay me back, bro. Spread the word by leaving a rating and review on iTunes. Thanks for joining us where it always feels good.